everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to another video build. So, we're going to start our McLaren 120th MP4 5B. Now, as I said before, I reviewed this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is a build for a friend of mine, for Luke Carswell. Um, so, I'm completely on my death pay with this. I've never done one of these kits before. I've never built an F1 kit before in my life. I've got a couple in the stash. Uh, one of my dream kits is MP4 6 and 12 scale from Tamiya. So this is a good practice for it, uh, <laughs> but certainly throw it at the deep end here with this one. So yes, different build press process to do, uh, and a few different things uh, I've never done before. So it's going to be interesting to see, uh, and interesting to do. It's not going to go smoothly, unfortunately, as you're going to see near the end, but we get there in the end. Um, so let's jump straight to a very quick recap of what's in the box. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. So we'll start off with a quick look in the box. Now I did a full review of this um, about a week or so ago, two weeks ago. Um, it's on the channel. It's a bit more in depth than this. So you can go and have a look. But typical Tamiya box, um, but portrait style rather than landscape picture on the front, which is quite unusual for Tamiya. Uh, we open it up, we've got a typical early 90s Tamiya kit with all the typical packaging you would uh, expect to get in there. Um, and then just several screws. I sped this up to save us uh, lingering around for ages, but for the age, the kit parts look good. There's not any flash, there's no mist moldings, everything's nice and crisp uh, and sharp. Typical Tamiya quality. Um, doesn't look too complex of a kit, even though we've added some aftermarket, it looks pretty simplistic. Uh, in its build, and uh, hopefully shouldn't give us too much trouble. Clear parts look good. We've got two different clear parts on there. Um, one's got a little visor on it, I think. And then the tyres in the stereotypical old Tamiya bag that they came in. We've got some tyre markings, which we won't be using. And then we've got the kit decals, which are a little bit past their use. So we're not going to use these. We are going to use the uh, taboo set we've got. We'll have a look in a minute. Typical Tamiya pamphlet, instructions, fold out. Pretty simple assembly, uh, nice and easy and concise to follow, and of course all the colour call out later. We've got a full carbon decal set for it as well from Studio 27, uh, which is quite a bit in there to be honest, but hopefully um, be quite easy and simple to do. As you can see, all different types of carbon fibre and composite and what have you. Quite a hard set to get this, thank you to Mika for getting this for us. And then we've got a Taboo full decal set with all the Marlboro sponsorship decals and a Studio 27 upgrade P set as well. So that's it. That's what we've got and that's what we're going to work with. So we've got a luminous highlighter and we're going to go through and mark out everything that's going to need to be painted uh, and clear coated. This way we can go through make sure we don't miss any parts. And it's a good way of just checking that we've got everything. There's nothing worse than priming, painting, clear coating to find a part that you completely forgotten about or didn't realize was part of it and that can hold you up for a few days then trying to get these parts all painted up so we'll just go through with the highlighter and just highlight the part numbers to anything that needs painting or clear coating and um, yeah that way we've got a reference to go through and quickly check off uh, just spend five minutes going through and double check as well just keep going through uh, until you're happy you've got everything covered but it's a handy tip to do and uh, yeah i think it always helps me just go through and um, fully clarify all the parts need to cut off and clean up. Uh, anything that needs glued in place, like these side pods, which are going to prove pretty tricky to do. Um, and we just know we've got everything then, and we're all prepared and ready to go. But yeah, just go through, keep checking every page. It's surprising how much you can miss by not looking through. Um, each time I went through and went back to a page, I spot another part. And I'm just putting a question mark there because we don't know where we're going to have these covers on the side. Um, but if we do, this is where we need to prep them and get them glued in place. So like I say, well, we're spending a couple of minutes to go through. And like I say, once you've done it, go through, double check, you've got everything. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's everything we need, cutting off and painting. 
So we've got our Tamiya side cutters. We're going to go through and cut all the parts off, do the obligatory clean up, and get it all mounted and ready for primer. But we do have the side pods to glue in, and we are going to modify um, the kit a bit as well. We're going to cut off that nose cone so it's a separate piece. So like I say, I'm just using my reference on the instructions uh, going through, and then we're just going to quickly test fit some parts. So these are the covers that go on the side. Now I'm building this for Luke, my um, buddy Luke Carswell. And after chatting to him, we decided to leave these off. So I was just test fit to see what they're like. And they were okay. They weren't great, but they weren't too bad. But these side pods definitely need glued in place. So these are going to prove quite troublesome. And sadly, I've missed most of the footage of me sanding them. But these must have taken me a couple of days to fix. Um, they were a little bit of a nightmare. There's quite a big scene down the back, as you can see. Uh, and then the little one at the front where it attaches just to the front. And yeah, it took quite a lot of filling to sort out. But we'll go around, we'll get all the seams off, all the sprue points off, get everything cleaned up to nice clean plastic, uh, and then we can judge what we're going to do and get everything sorted for primer. So using the UMP sponge and the UMP thinny stick, just getting the seam off the front of that nose cone. Not a lot of pressure applied. Same on the side, any sprue points are cut off, sanded, whether you need the sponge to go around the curves and then the flatter um, thinny stick to get the actual sprue point off the side of the pod. Um, you can judge yourself what sand do you need, uh, but for me, these are my most popular ones. The 220 grey sponge, the 400 um, thinny stick, 400 customizable, and the buffer are my most used sanders, I would say. So yeah, I'm just going through, cleaning it all up. A little bit of cleanup required, not a huge amount. Although it's an older Tamiya kit, there's not a huge amount um, of troublesome work on this. Um, the worst bit we're going to deal with is those side pods, which, like I say, took me a couple of days, and I didn't get any footage at all of me sanding them, but they took a lot of work to get completely de-seamed. Okay, as I said previously, we're going to cut off the nose cone of this. So we've got my JLC razor saw. We do have a panel line demarcation all the way around exactly where we're going to cut. So it's a case of start the cut and just keep stopping and checking and make sure you're following the line you want to follow. We've got my JLC razor saw, very, very precise tool, this one. Uh, my favorite razor saw, the more. And we're just going to stop, check, stop, check um, until we go through. Uh, sped it up because it did take a couple of minutes or so to do this, just nice and carefully. Clean the saw up, stop, have a look, make sure we're following the line because this part will rest up against this later. We're going to attach it with magnets. So it could be removed or left on separately from the actual bodywork itself. Uh, so really take your time here because we want this to line up perfectly. So as you can see, cutting through it really easy and quickly. But I don't want to rush it at all. And once we've got it to the end, a little bit of a wiggle. Nice and careful. There we go. And off she comes. And there we are. We'll grab a 800 customizable. Nice flat straight edge. And we'll just run it over a couple of times. We don't want to go too crazy on there. We don't want to change the profile, but we do want to get rid of any excess plastic, like so. And there we go. That's that cut off. Like I say, just a light sand, no real pressure there. And there we go. We repeat the same on the front of the bodywork as well. And just a quick test fit. So it's here now where I'm looking, thinking, okay, so how are we going to hold this on? I'm looking at things, should I glue it on? And I thought, you know what? I think magnets will do the trick here. So Luke said he had some magnets for me. He sent them over. So we'll put a single magnet under the uh, monocoque uh, cockpit and then a piece of metal on the actual nose itself. And then that will be removable later on. So we're just getting our side pods on here. I'm just lining it up. I've already glued one side on. And we'll glue the back on there as well. I'm just going to apply a little bit of extra thin. That's my Tamiya Extra Thin EMA Plasti World Mix. Nice hot glue. I do have a guide on the channel for making it. And just gives us a nice hot glue. It takes a little bit longer to dry than the plastic wall by itself. And we just glue it, hold it for a second, and then we need to let that dry overnight. Now, what I'm going to do, and it is off camera because for some reason I had hours and hours and hours just sat of filling and sanding, and I've gone and missed it all. I've no idea how I've managed it. But somehow I have <laughs> no idea at all, but it's a real shame. So contemplate how to fill this. And my first thought was we use sprue goo. So we use sprue goo. Um, we let that dry for about three days. I'm just going to put this piece in here 
as well. Uh, we let the sprue goo die for about three days, um, and then we came in, sanded that. We still had a few little pit marks in there, which is normally the case. Uh, we filled those with shea glue, took a couple of goes to do, uh, and we eventually got it nice and flush and filled. So it was a good job. We uh, we did use the sprue glue because I think it did uh, make short work of that big panel line. Now we've got some photo edge to use here. Um, we've got the little side plates for the rear spoiler and for the nose as well. I guess they're fins of sort. You can see them there. So we cut them off using our Zuron PE shears. Be careful of these things. They are absolutely razor sharp and they do bloody hurt when they catch your hand. And this is it. So we've got that part. There's a little glue part to glue underneath as well. So we've cut them off. We've got our Tamiya diamond um, file to clean up the fret points. Uh, but I'm just looking at this thinking, right, okay, so that goes like that. We'll cut off all the excess um, fret and then we'll come up with our diamond file and give it a quick sand like so. Well, file really, isn't it? Not a sand. And there we go. So these are the rear spoiler parts. So we're just going to clean them all up. These parts are going to be kept separate because the spoiler is different colours. Um, this is the fluorescent orangey red colour on the outside uh, and black on the inside. Uh, the front is all white. I'm just test fitting it there. The friction fits in there pretty well. So there we are, just testing that, and that's lovely. No problems there. And then a little bit of sanding on the back. So this is just after it's been glued now. There's nothing else on here. So I'm just taking off the glue marks. I'm giving it a little bit of a sand, taking it right back. Uh, and then we're going to come in with a sprue goo and fill it up. And leave for a couple of days. Leave the sprue goo for as long as you possibly can. Um, here we go. There's our white sprue goo. We made this on another video on the channel a while ago. Um, now, I put this on. This video was started on the 1st of December. And we are coming up to the 19th now. Now, we've had a few issues, as you'll see in a minute. But I left this to dry for a good five days. Um, just to make sure it fully dried. And it does pay to just leave it a little bit. So load up your brush and just touch where you want to go. Now you want to be just proud, so you do want to leave a little bit behind. So you do need to load your brush up a little bit and then just build it up wherever you want to fill. And obviously you're putting plastic on plastic, so it is probably the best filler, but the downside is it takes forever to fully dry. Like I say, I've lost all the footage of me sanding it. It's a real pain in the backside. I have no idea what happened. Um, obviously, repeat it for the other side as well. But it was a couple of days' work to get rid of this. Um, it was a little bit of a pig. And as you'll see in a little bit, we had to do it again, which I'll explain a little bit later on. So good glue, good, good filler. It just takes a while to dry. So we've got some PE parts to attach to the PE parts. We've got some Loctite Creative uh, Pen CA glue. I'm just putting some little bits on the edge. Now, they do mate up side to side, these bits. They are all handed as well, so they do go a specific way. So make sure you line it up. Keep referring to your instructions. And then we just want to touch this just to the edge. Like so. So line it up. We've been a thicker CA glue, you do get a little bit of work in time once you've got it in place. There we go, we're happy with that. Looking good, it looks pretty um, straight to us. We grab a cotton bud, we can wipe off any excess CA glue, which is always helpful to do now. But as you'll see in a bit, we can also remove it with acetone. You always see the acetone on the bench. So get rid of as much as you can while it's still wet. And then when it's dry, a little bit of acetone on a pointed cotton bud and just gently rub up the edge and that should remove any dried CA glue. You need to on the inside as well because this will be seen from inside. So please do it inside as well. Now we're ready for primer. So sadly, like I say, I've lost all the footage of me sanding the pods. We've just gone through with various Denny sticks, sanded them. Uh, and then filled it with CA glue and repeated. So a little bit boring to watch, not the uh, most interesting thing. What we're doing here is we're keying all the parts for primer. So we've got a uh, 220 grade sponge, roughly. I'm just going to go through and lightly scuff all the surfaces. That will remove any fingerprints, glue marks, any imperfections on there. 
and then we can mount everything ready. So I've got a little bit of double sided tape from 3M on an old UMP primer bottle. This these tape is fantastic. Very, very good little uh, sticky pads. And then all the other parts we're going to mount in various ways using cocktail sticks, clips, etc. etc. Once everything's mounted and we're happy it's all ready to go, we've got some UMP airbrush cleaner on a piece of kitchen paper. I'm going to completely degrease it all. Uh, and get a prep for primer. So just rub all over the body with this, then come back in with a dry piece and completely dry it off. And that way, there's no residue behind, no fingerprints, and we've got a nice, clean, prepped surface ready for primer. So again, worthwhile step. Do every single part, get into every little recess. Just be careful of those pods because that connection point at the front is quite thin. Uh, just take your time and uh, wipe it over and there we go like so repeat that for all the other parts all the little bits as well uh, and i've always had no problem doing this at all so it's a step i always do um, it takes a couple of minutes and i think it's worthwhile doing you pair you and pair brush cleaner works perfectly doing this and there we go we're in a very dirty spray booth this could have really done with some fresh paper in it but it's okay for now we're going to use our anti-static brush on the body make sure everything's off we've got some Tamiya spray fine surface primer that we've decanted, thinned about 20% with Tamiya lacquer thinner and retarder, and we've got our 0.35 ultimate apex at about 18 psi, and we're going to put three light coats of primer over the whole body and all the separate parts as well. So just take your time here, normal spray technique on and off the airbrush uh, before, sorry, on and off the model with the airbrush before you go on or off air. And uh, yeah, just build up slowly. Make sure you get in all inside those pods, any other recessed areas where you're going to need to paint. And yeah, just build it up. Uh, and as before, I'll sped it up a little bit to get us through it. I'll just show this one coat and then we'll come back uh, and show the rest as we go. So the fine surface primer from Tamiya is a really good primer. Uh, as you can see, we are dusting every single part with the anti static brush. I'm um, just putting a couple of light coats on each one to begin with. The PE part needs to be a little bit more gentle with applying the primer a little bit thinner but essentially we're probably for about three coats on all these so what i tend to do on the first coat is put a light coat down come in put another one down almost straight away because i put such a light coat down first it's normally dry by the time i come back on this i did a second coat on the p parts almost straight away uh, because i put the paint down so thin on the first coat and as you can see it builds up nice and quick and then on to the body for its second coat. Like I say, put about two or three coats. Three coats normally does it for me. Uh, it depends if you're using the spray can or your airbrush. The spray can I'll put it down a lot thicker. Uh, just remember, this is a spray paint, so it is meant to go down a bit thicker, and it does like to go on quite wet. It does self-level much better if it goes on wetter. So it does spray differently to the LPs. Uh, people seem to think they are exactly the same paint, and they're not. So there we go, with three coats down, we are adequately primed. We're going to leave this overnight, and then we come back the next day. We'll key all the primer, take off any high spots, any spits of paint, anything like that at all, any hairs. But it's pretty clean. We did a pretty good job. We've got the same sponge that we used to key the body. I'm just going to go around and lightly sand the primer. That way we'll get a much smoother finish, and any imperfections will be removed. And like I said, be careful near edges, as always, as I always say. Uh, it's so easy to burn through paint on edges, so just really take your time. Don't be too aggressive, and uh, yeah, just go through. You can use your finger to feel over the bodywork, and you'll feel any raises or spots or dust or anything in there. I'll just give it a quiet go over. As you can see, I'm live here, so I'm chatting away, <laughs> as usual. And uh, yeah, just get rid of those high spots or any imperfections in the paint. So the following day, we've got some TS26 now, which is Tamiya Spray. Uh, white decanted, then 20% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner with Retarda, and we are ready for some color. We've got the 0.35 Apex, um, 18 psi. I'm just going to put down probably three coats of this again, just like the primer. It does like to go down wet, it self levels much nicer. Um, but for the first coat, just apply a nice mist coat to begin with and build it up slowly as we go. So there we are. So we just build it up slowly again. Using our spray technique um, on and off the model with the air before we finish or start. That way any spits of paint won't hit the model. Um, we're at a distance adequate enough to not cause runs or pools. 
and we're just building up so you can already see the white color going down now i know a lot of people would say leave the primer down for the white but i think the actual white of paint looks a lot more vibrant than the white of primer so i will often do this um because i think it looks a lot better uh, like i say we're going to build it up slow all the parts are getting painted separately too there's a few of them to do so again light coats building it up we'll probably put about three coats on in total so after our three coats of ts26 we are all perfectly painted we're going to pop it on our bench and we're going to cover it with our plastic boxes like we do with my 2k in that way because it's got a nice wet paint we won't get any dust of that landing in them and then this will be left uh, overnight as well now this is a mistake i've made now because although i left it overnight i don't think i quite left it long enough now i know full well the ts sprays take longer than the lps um you can see this when decaling if you're not careful with decal solutions they can leave watermarks on the paint because it's still curing and this is going to bite us bad in a minute you will see it before that though on a live stream i spend about two hours masking up the demarcation um for the fluorescent uh red and uh yes what a pain this is and yes i felt like crying at the end of this so quite a tough um job doing this trying to get it absolutely lined up perfect was an absolute pain in the backside it probably took me the entire two hour live stream to do and uh, it proves to be completely wasted time in a minute as you'll see but we've got the tamiya one two and three mil tapes and the the 6, 10, and 18 mil as well. And we're going to mask all the body off. And um, then we can spray our fluorescent red in those iconic markings of the McLaren. So the Tamiya Thin Tape, same as the Azu, really good quality tape. Can't go wrong with either. Um, I just like the Tamiya's because they have like a little dust shield on the side so it doesn't pick up any fluff or lint or dust or sanding residue. And you always have nice, clean tape up. Looking at that, the demarcation on the front looks really good. Very, very happy with that. So yeah, that's looking good. Uh, a lot of work to get to there. It was quite a, a bit of a pain in the backside to do. Right then, once we're happy with that, we're going to infill um, the lines using the Tamiya 6, 10 and 18 mil tapes. So that is all nicely masked off. We then do the piece behind the cockpit as well. And then we can do the bigger lines at the back as well. So same method, we've got the Tammy, I think it's the 2 mil tape. I'm um, just using pictures, references online for the markings and just following the way it follows and contours over the body. Now the main thing you need to be careful of here is making sure that the point at the back is central, same as the front. And that that piece there, where I'm just going to burnish down now, is fully burnished down. Because if that lifts, you'll get bleed through. And it would be more than just bleed through, it would be actually paint spraying through. So I'm using my ruler to make sure that we are uh, equal to the back as the other side and then fully burnishing it down and then follow um, the side pod all the way down to the edge. Now underneath the side pod it will be painted black later on. I think it's going to be painted black. Um, we'll double check out but it's certainly not uh, body colour. So we don't need to worry about carefully masking that. So we can just take it over the side and then mask the front of the pod, paint it in the orange and then we come back later and paint it white. But quite an important line here. Just look at references and you'll see exactly where these markings flow. And again, making sure we're symmetrical and equidistant from each other. I know a big word for me. And then we just mask off the front here. And that will stop any paint getting to the front. And we'll just paint that whole side pod in the fluorescent orange then. And then same with the Tamiya 6, 10 and 18 mil. We come in and then fill all the areas we don't want to paint. So again, quite a bit of masking tape. I was going to use cling film, but because of the complexity of the shape... I think it would have taken us longer to do. Um, so I decided to go this route with the tape instead. Don't even like doing this. It's quite a waste of tape. Um, but I think it was the most logical and easiest way of doing it. So I'm just going to go around, infill it all. And then we can get to paint. And there we go. All masked up. We're mounted again, ready for some paint. We've got our cotton bud. That we're going to make sure everywhere is burnished down and then just before we paint we'll also make sure it's all burnished down as well because we do not want any paint getting under there now i was terrified that this was not going to be masked properly i was going to get bleed through nothing was central 
Um, so here we are on the spray book of Gravity's McLaren fluorescent red. And uh, yeah, we're giving this a good shake, but we're going to open it up and we're going to use our Badger paint mixer to give it a good mix up. Like so. Our colours like this, because they are so uh, vibrant, we need to make sure we've got all the pigments off the bottom of the bowl. So make sure they are fully mixed. It's worthwhile spending a minute or so just giving a quick whiz round with the paint mixer. Once you're happy, take it out, wipe it off. And again, burnishing down those edges. And we're going to apply several light coats. Well, that was the plan. That was the plan. Sadly, things don't go quite according to plan, as you will see in a second. But we start off 0.35 apex, 18 psi as usual. I spray gravity many, many times. Dozens of models of mine are finished with this paint. I know full well how to paint it, but we do get a paint reaction. So we start off nice light thin coats. Now, the color looks darker on camera. You'll see that in a bit because this is like a fluorescent orange. And it does look red on camera. So it looks like I'm putting a lot more paint down than I actually am. Uh, I know how to paint this stuff. I know how to build it up. Uh, and that right there is perfect for a first coat. Just make sure you get the bottom and the edges of the mask in as well. But it's funny how the colour changes on camera. Because to me it's a fluorescent orange. To camera it looks red. Now the trouble happens here on the back. Now I have no idea what it is. I do have a theory. And I think I've not let the TS paint dry long enough. Now, I know full well TS paint takes longer to dry than all the other lacquers. Um, and it's not quite 12 hours. I think I painted this white yesterday. Let me think. The day before morning. And this is the... Um, I suppose it is 24 hours it's been roughly. Yeah, so it has been about 24 hours, but normally I would leave it two days, but on a little bit of a deadline with this, so kind of want to push through. And I'm not putting heavy coats down at all, not even in the slightest. I'm just building up nice and slow. And uh, sadly, we do get a reaction. It's on this side. You can see it just where I was saying about burnishing down that tape. And I've just spotted it, and it's getting worse and worse. And I'm checking the other side and everywhere else, and nowhere else has a reaction whatsoever. Just that one little area there and i'm looking at it thinking oh crap i'm thinking right okay so i did try blowing it over a bit more paint and it made no difference whatsoever the reactions happened it's there there's no going back and sadly we've wasted all this time to get to this point probably about hmm, a week's work down the drain here about a week's work not in time but in actual days it's taken me to get to this point um, so I've just dusted it over and there you go, there's a reaction. So just the paint separated, which it does. So gravity is a hot paint. I don't think I've let the TS dry quite long enough. I should leave it two days really. And we've had a reaction between the paint. So nothing much we can do. There's only one thing to do and that's a bath in brake fluid. So what an absolute shame. And you know what? The markings were perfect. There was no bleed through. They were symmetrical, central, they were absolutely perfect. So right about now, I feel like jumping out the window. I've been on the first floor, so I wouldn't go far anyway. Um, but yes, what an absolute crying shame for that to happen. But it's happened, what can we do? We've got to start again. So I normally use Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner to strip paint. Um, but because of the work I did on those side pods, Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner has a habit of opening seams back up. So... After chatting to the lads, I've had this bottle of brake fluid for years, brand new, never been used. I thought this is probably the best thing to do. So popped it in. Within a couple of minutes, it started to remove the orange paint. But the TS paint, even though I don't think I let it dry enough, has proven a lot more stubborn. And I probably left it in here for about four hours in total. Um, while we started off, we uh, hit it with the toothbrush, an old toothbrush. And as you can see, after about 40 minutes, it starts to come off slowly. And I knew I'm going to have to leave it to soak. So I literally left it for about four hours and then came back and hit it up again. So the brake fluid, be careful. Don't get it on anything you don't want to ruin because it is nasty stuff. Uh, this is DOF 4. Um, as you can see now, after about three, four hours, it's starting to come off a lot easier now. 
definitely is. But I did find the white TS and primer was a lot more stubborn than any of the other paints. So even though I don't think it quite cured properly, it was still hanging on there for dear life. Um, so yes, like I say, a bit of a nightmare, but just one of those things that happens in modeling. We've all been here. We've all had bodies that have needed either stripping or redoing or going in the bin. Um, but this one... There we go. So after about four hours in there, we're out. We've got some you and prayer brush cleaner on a cotton bud. I'm just getting off any residue that's left behind and any other stubborn parts um, I hit with Miss Level and Thinner on a cotton bud. Now, all the hard work we did on those side pods, one of the very front pieces decided to come off and a few of the CA glue uh, filling points needed redoing as well. So it definitely took a lot more work to get to this point an absolute nightmare but like i say we worked through it and uh, literally we're going to run the video 20 minutes and start again now i'm not going to show all that i'm going to do it all off camera and we'll come back when we're masked ready for part two now the only difference i did second time around was i used lp2 i was speaking to alan and i know it too lps dry a lot faster than ts and uh, when alan did his mp44 i think it was or mp42 um, he was saying he used the LP2, so I thought, you know what, I will as well. It's near enough exactly the same colour, just a different paint. And uh, yeah, just to be better safe than sorry, I thought I'll go. We did sadly have to re-glue this part and refill it and refill um, some of the back parts as well. So a little bit of a nightmare. Brake fluid is safe to use on a plastic, but you may have to refill some parts you've previously done. So back in the spray booth, we're all masked up again. Uh, a lot quicker this time because I knew exactly where to put the mask and tape. Um, so definitely a bit quicker. I am absolutely worried sick about painting this again with the same paint. And we're going to apply many, many, many ultra thin coats of this paint. So UMP Apex, 0.35A uh, needle, uh, 18 PSI. And this is going to get about eight very, very light coats. Building up nice and slowly uh, until we've got the colour we want. So, yes, even though I know how to spray this, I sprayed it even thinner than I usually do uh, and just built it up really nice and slowly. It took about an hour and a half to paint on and off. I was just painting, go back, leave it, paint, go back, leave it. And, yeah, just taking my time. I sped it up a little bit here. Um, I'll show one quick coat going around. You can see just how thin and how slow I painted this. Uh, this is on, I think it's on about four speed, this is. So it's four times faster than I was doing it. So you can see the care I took because I didn't want to have to strip this again. And I certainly didn't want to have to mask it again. So as I said, we've gone back, all the way back to the beginning of the video. This has been refilled, reprimed, repainted white, remasked. And here we are putting down the colour again. So again, all the separate parts need painting as well. So nice thin coats building these up. You can see just how thin a coat we're popping on just to build it up and it does take a lot of work to get this paint to build up it's a very opaque translucent paint and it does take a long time to build up that color but after an hour or so we got there and um, yeah it starts to look really really good but still worried about that masking so this is about i would say it's about halfway through you see the colour starting to build up now. It looks really red on screen. It is a fluorescent orange. I think this is why this colour was made like this, because it looks red on camera, uh, which is obviously the Marlboro um, logo colour. Uh, but in real life, the car is actually a fluorescent orange, apparently. A bit of trivia for you there I heard the other day. But as you see, we're building it up slowly. We can start going a little bit heavier. Now we've got a base colour down, but don't go heavy, and we certainly don't want to go wet with it. But we can see there now, after many, many, many coats, it's, uh, it's certainly looking the part now. And what I'm doing, I'm paying attention to all the edges, all the edge of the masking tape, just to ensure we've got everywhere fully painted. So you just need to be very thorough in just making sure you go for a cover. Because you don't want to mask it, to have to mask it again. Because I've done that before, and that's a nightmare. So, yes, nice light coats, building up. I would say we've had about eight coats on this. We've taken a long time, put nice light coats on, building it up slowly. All the parts here are separate. 
Obviously not all of them are this color. So we picked them all out and we singled them out like this. And as you can see, my glove is bearing the color of the car as well. And there we go. So we left it to dry for 20 minutes or so. And this is the very nerve wracking part of unmasking it. So there's several things that can go wrong here. We've either completely masked in the wrong place. We end up pulling the base color off or we've had loads of bleed through under the paint, which is definitely not what we want at all. Uh, but thankfully, it all went well. No bleed through whatsoever, nothing at all. Um, the color looks right, although it looks a bit iffy on camera, the color is right. Demarcations of the masking tape, absolutely perfect. I'm just gonna speed this up because it's a bit mind numbly boring watching this being unmasked. But no, it came out absolutely perfect. So. Yes, whilst it took us twice as long to do than it should have, um, we've come through at the end with a good finish. And uh, we can let this dry for a day or two now and then come back and get some decals down. Now, I am nervous of the decals because they are taboo decals. I've used taboo decals before and they fell apart on me. But I've had other people tell me they've used them and had no issues. So I'll go with that and believe them and hopefully we'll have no issues at all. Now, this part at the front, that is going to be painted black on the inside of that pod. So we're going to have to figure out if we need to do that before or after 2K. So that's some research I need to do. Because if it's before, we're going to have to do it before we do decals. We're going to have to mask it up. So I'll have a look at that. But yeah, the demarcation was absolutely perfect. There we go. Very happy with that. It's looking good. No bleed through whatsoever. Got a little bit of ridge, which you will get from masking paint. So once it's dried, we'll hit it with 1200 micromesh and take that ridge off. I'm just making sure everything's okay, but that's looking good. Very, very happy with that. Not too bad at all. Then we've got all the other parts as well, which are looking good too. All the color looks good. Just really weird color on camera. Very, very strange color. But I can see why they did it. I can totally see why they did it this color. So there we go, after a bit of faffing and messing about, we're all painted and ready for decal. And at this point now in the video, I would normally be at 2K, but this is a slightly different build. Um, like I said, I'm completely out of my depth with this. Never done an F1 car before. Uh, so it's certainly interesting to see in the build process and uh, how we're gonna do things. But we'll be back in part two, where we're gonna do the de uh, decaling. Uh, if it needs a wash, I don't think it does, and then it's put a wash on this, uh, and then we'll be 2K in it, and then that can be put away to fully cure while we work on the rest of the kit as well. So there we are. We're going to put all the parts in this safe storage box, like I always do. Uh, that way, the safe, the cupboard for tonight, while that paint's curing, will leave off the lid. Right then, there we go. So a bit calamitous there in places. My own stupid fault. I know the TS paints take longer to dry, and I should have just left it. Saving a day cost me probably two, three days' work. Um, yes, and all I had to do was wait. Wait a day, and instead I had two, three days of work to do instead. But lessons learned, my own stupid mistake, and we got there in the end, and it's looking good. So we're now ready for primer. For primer, we're ready for decals and 2K, uh, and we can get this thing motoring along and hopefully get it finished and luke will be happy with it i hope so um so yes yeah, so hopefully part two of this will be up in let me see uh the next week easily the next week uh i'm going to start the evo six so that's going to be in uh prime and paint before we know it in fact i've got the masking to do today for the mask in the red um and i'll have some reviews and there will be a uh at the bench just before christmas as well and just after Christmas, I'll do like a yearly review video looking through what I've built. There we are. As always, we want to support the channel. There's a Patreon me link, a PayPal me link, and a Buy Me a Coffee link in the description down below. Any support given for my videos is greatly received. And as I always say, without that support, there couldn't be these videos. So thank you to everybody that does. Check out Intensive Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com. We can get a lot of products I use in my videos. My Paul ISM modeling page, we can see all my personal modeling work. The Offer Hangout group, the Live of the Bench page, and the GB group as well. Make sure you sub to the channel, give them thumbs up or a thumbs down, click the bell notification, and leave a comment. I appreciate everyone that leaves a comment. 
And uh, yes, and if you're watching and got this far, let me know your favourite Formula One driver ever. Mine's got to be Ayrton Senna. I always loved Ayrton Senna. And even to this day, he's an iconic hero. So let me know your favourite F1 driver. There we are. Enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. I am about to go live in about 10 minutes for Sunday's live stream. So yes, no rest for the wicked. And I will catch you all next time. So take care, everybody. Bye-bye.